Fort Lauderdale, Seven Isles, Las Olas Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale. Prestige, luxury, and of course location all describe Las Olas Isles. This exclusive waterfront neighborhood, referred to the locals as Las Olas Isles, actually consists of six smaller neighborhoods. Today we're going to check out those six neighborhoods that make up Las Olas Isles. Now, and check and check it out. It is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, so we're going to go ahead and hit Navarro. We're going to hit Hendrix and Venice Isles. Hit Nermi Isles, Seven Isles, Las Olas Isles, and Riviera Isles. Now, Las Olas Isles is kind of a misnomer. Las Olas Isles is actually a group of about seven streets on Las Olas Boulevard that actually makes up kind of the transition from Las Olas Boulevard, the shopping area, and the condo and townhome residential areas into the actual waterfront single family homes here in Las Olas Boulevard. So, um, so yeah, so it's, and as Sue said, this is absolutely beautiful. You guys are gonna be astounded by some of these properties that, are, that we're gonna take a look at, and you're gonna be astounded by the, the view. It's breathtaking, some of these properties. So, um, get ready, let's check it out, let's get going. <laughs> Before we get started going out and checking out the individual neighborhoods, a couple of things they have in common. All of these are located off the popular Las Olas Boulevard. If you've been to Fort Lauderdale, you haven't seen Fort Lauderdale until you've cruised Las Olas Boulevard. Okay? It's impressive multi-million dollar waterfront estates. Okay? And, and most of these homes, they're, they're located on the water or located within walking distance of the water. They have ample boat dockage which can accommodate some of the most impressive yachts in the area, some of which you'll definitely see in our video here. Mm -hmm. okay? All the properties have an unobstructed access which be, basically basically means no fixed bridges. You can get in there via drawbridge to the intercoastal waterway and ultimately to the Atlantic Ocean. I'm actually so impressed with some of these homes here. I, sometimes I can't even speak straight, okay? Um, the views from some of these properties are absolutely breathtaking and it's truly an example of South Florida living at its best. So um, the Las Olas homes here are all basically walking distance to the beach and they're only a, mi only a few minutes away from some of the luxury living in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. Dining, uh, parks, stuff like a uh, fine dining, for example, one of ours, Chima Steakhouse, Rocco's Taco and Tequila. Again, not to be missed if you head down to the Las Olas Boulevard. Uh, you got Louis Bossy. That's Louis Bossy. You got the Floridian, um, some of the parks, Idlewood Park, Merrill Fogg Park, Holiday Park, Cooley Hammock Park, which is actually right off of Las Olas Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Okay, and of course, some of the galleries and the museums, the Stranahan House, the museum, uh, the Art Rages on the River, which yes. is where the big art shows are. And, uh, all these kind of wonderful places. So, as Sue says, let's go ahead and get started. Heading east on the south side of Las Olas Boulevard, we're gonna go ahead and start with Riviera Isles. It's the first of the, two, of the only two neighborhoods that are basically on the south side heading east of Las Olas Boulevard. And it's kind of unique because it's only accessible through the Idlewild neighborhood, um, and which is kind of the east side of Riviera Drive, part of Idlewood, Riviera Isles. It can be a little bit confusing to get to see it and kind of get around there. Um, but it's very, very small. Only, actually, only Novero Isles is actually a smaller neighborhood. So there's basically three roads coming through. Flamingo Drive, Solar Isles Drive, and the west side of Riviera Drive. Okay, this, uh, this neighborhood here uh, on, on the three roads, it consists only of single family homes. And, they, and one of the unique things about them is that uh, it's only single family homes. They're waterfront homes. So every single home, actually based upon the, uh, the location of the canals that make up the aisles themselves, okay, they create waterfront homes for every one of them. And um, the price point on these runs anywhere from two million for some of the older ones that have been, uh, that have been here for a little while, up to about 10 million, and in some cases even higher, depending upon you know, the, the extent of the size of the lot and the extent of the, uh, uh, of the renovations that have been done. So um, as you can see, this is an incredibly beautiful neighborhood. Very peaceful, very quiet, very serene. The size of the neighborhood itself, the location basically on the intercoastal, okay? And the proximity to the ocean and to the, to the uh, infrequency at which properties become available here are one of the things that adds to, uh, to the uniqueness and the allure, okay? And it makes it one of the most sought after neighborhoods in Las Olas Isles. So we just kind of, Take a little cruise around here, see if we can find some more properties to take a look at. Um, 
one of the things to note about these properties is that um, a lot of them though they don't have necessarily gated entrances coming in they have very very active uh, neighborhood watches and community associations so it's kind of a hidden kind of a hidden benefit if you will so but uh, and as you can see from some of the signs that are out here um, it is a very politically active area as is most of uh, most of Las Olas and Fort Lauderdale in itself Many areas of South Florida, and Fort Lauderdale in particular, um, are home to actors and other celebrities. But not a whole lot of them can actually be and lay claim to being the home of a celebrity home. The 1986 movie Flight of the Navigator was filmed in part here, the house right behind us, off of uh, 615 Idlewild Drive, okay? And it's still here, and as you can see, and if you've seen the movie recently, you can see not much has changed actually. So um, this is a very, very beautiful neighborhood, very lovely neighborhood. Um, and it's actually the closest one on the south side of Las Olas, heading east, closest to both the intercoastal, which is right behind us here, and also to the Atlantic Ocean, to the beach. So, um, and this is a little bit larger neighborhood. Okay, it's got about five or six key streets here. Um, Las Olas Boulevard being one of them. It's actually part of the Idlewild neighborhood. Um, Idlewild Drive, which we're on, Ponciana Drive, Sunset Drive, the eastern side of Riviera Drive, unlike the west, unlike the western side of Riviera Drive, which is part of the other neighborhood, Riviera Isles. So, and it is a little confusing. So, um, we've had to drive around here a few times to kind of make sure that we have uh, everything set up and whatnot. So, but it's a it's a gorgeous day out here, and you can see some of the beautiful homes, some of the beautiful areas out here. Um, these are primarily single-family homes. There are a few condos that are off of Las Olas Boulevard and proper, okay, and um, also off of Sunset Drive uh, here in Idlewild, okay. But basically, there a lot of them are, um, are as I said, single-family homes. Uh, the price point here is basically all over the map. It's anywhere from the low mil million to two million up to some of the more opulent, more beautiful homes that are uh, that are. I mean, 10, 15, sometimes even $20 million. Um, so the home sizes themselves start anywhere from probably two bedroom, two bath homes and condos to up to six bedroom, six bath homes. Um, and, and they're just, they're just even, they're even larger. So it's just, just absolutely gorgeous walking down this neighborhood. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful place to walk. People down here um, are actually very, very friendly and they're very, very neighborly coming out to see you. As you can see folks coming down behind us, doing a little party barging here. Um, one of the unique things is that if you look behind us, and we'll see if we can get over there to kind of show some of them, is that a lot of the homes here actually have their own dock, their own personal dock, and their own private dock area. So, um, which makes it kind of unique. Um, so we'll try to stay away from some of them. And of course we have uh, the ever-present Sunday weekend afternoon party barge coming down. So these folks are out here definitely having a, um, a wonderful time. So, uh, so yeah, we're just enjoying the weekend out here. You can see some of the large, the large boats and more of over here. You can see they're having a good time. Like most of the neighborhoods here in Las Olas Isles, the areas are very, very well kept. The homes are in very good condition. And you're gonna see a variety of them. Anything, anywhere from some of the original ones that were built back in the, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, the ones that have actually been torn down and been rebuilt up to be, uh, to be larger homes. Um, and so there, are, there are a few here that have the Spanish Hacienda type look with the, with the single level and the barrel tile roofs. In that nice, in, in the nice, uh, the nice soft colors, the uh, the orange barrel tile roof, the salmons and the pinks for the homes. So, but truly, truly a beautiful neighborhood to just drive around and take a look, and to walk around through. Heading west on the north side of Las Olas Boulevard, we see we come to the first neighborhood of Seven Isles. Now, this group of isles is probably it's unique in that it's the closest to the ocean and it is on the on the intercoastal also. Okay, it's comprised of about 315 neighborhoods. And there's about, a, there's about 1,100, maybe 1,200 residents on here. It's the second largest neighborhood, and it has both waterfront properties and non-waterfront properties. And there are nine streets on here, and it's important to remember these streets because some of these streets have this unique characteristics. Um, there's Alta, there's Aqua Vista Boulevard, Barcelona Drive, Castilla Drive, Del Mar Place, DeSoto Drive, DeSoto Terrace, Pelican Isle, 
Sea Island and Seven Isles Drives. Okay, now it's it's like I said, it's it's unique in that some of these have no waterfront access at all. Okay, other ones don't have any uh, single-family homes. They have only condos on here. So depending upon what you're looking for, depending upon what you're what you're interested in, okay, you can take a look at those individual streets. Okay. Um, the other thing that's unique about Seven Isles is that it's the only one of the communities here on here in the Las Olas Isles neighborhoods that actually has its own homeowners association. Okay, now the um, some of the, these are these are pretty much single-family homes on the non-waterfront. Start at around a million. Okay, and they go up to two and two to three million dollars. Okay, the waterfront homes start at three million and can go up to fifteen, sometimes as high as twenty million, depending upon the location, depending upon the size of the home and what basically where it is. So it's an it's an absolute beautiful community here. You can see it's made up of a number of different home styles and home types. This is our the area of Seven Isles. Continuing west on the north on the north side of Las Olas Boulevard, we're going to go check out Nermi Isles. Okay, so these are primarily single-family waterfront homes with boat docks on the road. So it's basically made up of three road, three streets: Fiesta Way Isle, Nermi Isle, which we're on, and Royal Palm Drive. So, and the exception um, for the single-family homes being the Isle of Venice, which, much like Hendrix, Hendrix Isle, um, which you'll see in the next uh, street we're going up to, sorry, the next community we're going up to, is made up of condos, luxury condos and co-ops. So, the Isle of Venice has undergone a major renovation in, uh, in the recent years, and you can see it from most of the, all of this property that's under construction here, and it's still being worked on, okay? Um, and the, there's a variety of, a variety of housing options along with ocean access and, and no fixed bridges as well as the proximity to the ocean itself is makes this makes Nermi Isles a very popular area for retirees uh, okay, those, and those seeking that uh, you know that great work-life balance so as you can see there's a lot of properties that are still available here some vacant lots a lot of stuff being a lot of renovation being done so it's truly a beautiful walk and a beautiful area to be in Next community coming up, uh, coming westbound on North Las Olas Boulevard is Hendricks and Venice Isles. Now, this is kind of a unique area, as we said before, for two reasons. Number one, it's made up of two roads, Hendricks Isles Road and North Gordon Road, okay? And the funny thing about it is, is that with North Gordon, you can't even get to it through this, through this particular uh, entrance. You have to actually go out and around and come in through another way in Las Bol off of Las Olas Boulevard. So that's kind of neat around here. But, um, and every home on North Gordon is a waterfront home with a private backyard and boat docks. But again, it's only accessible via Los Olos Boulevard, not through the Vic, not through uh, through this area. Actually, it's really the, the easiest way to get through it is to actually go through uh, Victoria Park, which is kind of neat. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing to do. Hendrix Isle is primarily condos, luxury condos, and townhomes. There are a few properties here, uh, but a lot of them are being taken down and torn down and, and to be replaced with, with luxury condos like the one right here behind us, up here. So, at 410, okay. Now, one of the other things that's kind of neat about Hendrix Isle and Venice Isles is that if you're fortunate enough to be to purchase a property with dock space available, there's usually a very minimal charge. Whereas boaters, if they were coming in down here for like the uh, outside of Hendrix Isle, if you wanted to dock your boat here, it would be you would have to pay higher market rent, which depending upon the size of your boat, could be upwards of five to ten thousand dollars a month just for boat dockage. So small, small little community here, big impact on the neighborhood and big impact on what's going on. As I said, the majority of the homes here are condos, um, and they're beautiful condos. And a lot of the homes, a lot of the single-family homes here, are actually being taken down to be replaced with. Uh, with condos because it's a, it's just a much more economically viable alternative for folks in this particular street. Not to say that it's the same way throughout all of Las Olas Isles, but one of the things we're seeing is that there's a significant amount of zoning activity to get the properties here zoned, zoned residential for multi for multi-family use. Last, but certainly not least, in any, in any category except potentially <laughs> size of the footprint is Navarro Isle. Okay, it's basically made up of one road. It's uh, South Gordon Road. Okay, which uh, which can be, which actually can be accessed through Las Olas Isles and off of Las Olas Boulevard. Unlike previously, we saw North Gordon Boulevard, which you got to get to 
coming through uh, Victoria Park. But uh, this is uh, it's probably the smallest neighborhood in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, in the smallest neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale itself, if not in South Florida, okay? But like, like a lot of the other neighborhoods here in Las Olas Isles, it's all about quality, not necessarily quantity. So the homes in this neighborhood range from about 1,200 square feet to over 8,000 square feet. For example, if you take a look at the one right behind me, okay? And they range in price from a million up towards, upwards of five or six million dollars, okay? One of the beautiful things about Navarro Isles Navarro Isle is its proximity to the shops and the restaurants within Las Olas Boulevard. It's basically walking distance to, to a lot of the shops and a lot of the restaurants and everything the shopping off of Las Olas Boulevard. Just over the bridge, take a right on Las Olas and you're up to the shops. Over the bridge, take a left on Las Olas and you're heading down towards Fort Lauderdale Beach, Las Olas Beach, and of course the world famous elbow room. So, but uh, again, it's 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 not necessarily the uh, the quantity that matters, especially in the case of Navarro Island. It's the quality that matters, and there are some very very beautiful homes here. The ones that have been built here originally, and a lot of the ones that are currently being built or they're under construction. So, whether looking for that ideal ocean access waterfront luxury single family home with a dock or luxury condo or townhome, townhome close to Las Olas Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, airports, and points north and south, Las Olas Isles is certainly worth the look and the visit. Oh, I mean, absolutely. We have enjoyed this video. So, and I hope you would do as well. So, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop it in the, in the box below. Hit the subscribe button to get notified when we drop hey, our next give video. give us a thumbs up. Oh, definitely. Give us a thumbs up. Okay, and we'll see you next time. All right.